So, we want to welcome everyone to this seven day a gospel proclamation of the truth on prosperity and good success. So, we will pick up a couple of scriptures and be proclaiming them. We'll proclaim them for seven days because my understanding is that the word of God is like seed. And when it is planted in the soil of our hearts, there is conception and then it germinates or it begins to grow and bring forth fruit of the word. So how do you plant this word into your heart? It's by meditating on it and by verbalizing it, by speaking it. So I want you to understand the principle of what is going on. I need you to understand the principle of what is going on. So when we are speaking it, we are, it means that we are, it's part of the process of planting it in your heart. Because when you say a thing, then you tend to remember it. You tend to be able to be able to memorize it. And once you have been able to memorize it, it's in your heart. And you regularly be speaking it. It will bear fruit. It will definitely bear fruit. So I had somebody saying that, um, um, that, Anything to do with prosperity and success has a lot to do with proclaiming the word, proclaiming the word. In other words, meditating on the word and proclaiming it. But if we want miracles just by prayers, yes, you can just pray prayer and release the anointing and someone is blessed. But if we want to have individual prosperity and good success, then take the relevant word and begin to meditate on it, verbalize it, vocalize it, get together with brethren in unity in one accord, and begin to declare the word. So I want you to understand what we are doing, and I want you to put your whole heart in this thing, and as much as possible, we will try, everybody will try not to miss it. Encourage others to join, because God wants to do a definite work. Hallelujah. So we're going to start with the scripture. There's a scripture that says, and I'm going to uh, screen it for us uh, just for the purpose of assimilating it. The whole essence is for you to properly assimilate it. So this scripture is in um, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9. Just a minute. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Um, okay. Have you seen it? Can you see it on your screen? Yes, Pastor. Okay. Right. So, and it says, uh, I don't know why it's in this question. Just a second, please. <laughs> okay. It says, God is able to make all grace abound unto you that ye having all sufficiency, you having always all sufficiency in everything may abound unto every good work. I read again. God is able to make all grace abound unto me. See that. He said, unto me. So that I, having always all sufficiency in everything, may abound unto every good work. In the mighty name of Jesus, I repeat, God is able and God is already making all grace abound unto me 
and members of my family, having always all sufficiency in everything, so that we may abound unto every good work in the mighty name of Jesus. God is able to make all grace abound toward you. So let's say that together. God is able to make all grace abound toward me. That me always, know this word, always having all sufficiency, all sufficiency, all sufficiency in all things, in all things may abound to every good work. One more time. God is able, our Heavenly Father, He's able to make all grace, all grace. The important thing here is all grace, all grace. Everyone say all grace. God is able and God is making all grace. See it. God is making all grace abound toward me. God is making all grace abound toward me. And how is that grace coming through Christ? So that as a result of his, of all grace abounding towards me, I will have always all sufficiency in all things. <laughs> so that I will have always all sufficiency in all things. As a result, I abound unto every good work in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. NLT says, God will generously provide all you need. Let's see that together. God will generously provide all that we need and all members of our family. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. God will generously provide all you need, everything you need and everything that your family needs. God will generously provide for you. And you will always have everything you will always have. You will always have everything you need. And plenty left over to share with others. Okay. Another translation says, God who provides for all needs, human needs, will reward generosity. Okay. Another one says, God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance. So that by always having enough of everything, you may have abundantly in every good work. Okay. Another translation says this TPT I'm reading. Yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace. So that you will have more than enough of everything. Every moment and in every way. He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. Okay, let's go back to what's on the screen. Now say it together. Father, we thank you because you are making all grace abound towards us. Towards us and towards every member of our family. All grace has been, is abounding towards us as a result. At every point in time, always we have all sufficiency in all things and we are bound unto every good work. Church, God is able to make all grace. Church, what is all grace? What is all grace? Can I show you what it is? All grace means, just a second. So, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. So, this same 2 Corinthians, let's look at chapter 8 and let's look at verse 9. Okay, so the question is, what is the grace? Now, look at the grace. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Eh? You know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is that grace? That though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. That ye through his poverty might be rich. This is the grace of Jesus Christ. 
The grace of Jesus Christ is that you get what you don't deserve because Christ took what you deserved. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is that he, even though he was rich, yet for my sake and for the sake of every member of my family, as I'm talking, I want you to be saying, saying the same thing. Jesus Christ became poor so that through his poverty, we become rich. This is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was righteous and without sin, yet for our sakes, he became sin, he became a sin offering, that through his sin offering, we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This is the grace of God, that though, of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was in the place of glory, but even though he was in the place of glory, for our sakes, he condescended to our estate and he took our shame so that through his sufferings and his condescension, we might be exalted into the place of glory. Is this making sense? So let's say that together once again. For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know, say it, I know. Every member of my family will come to know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That even though he was rich, yet for our sake, he, sakes, he became poor. So that through his poverty, we become rich. Now say it. Through the poverty that Christ suffered, we possess riches in great abundance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. Let's um, go back to the original scripture. Okay. Bakuri basaka dagarika turia. God is able. Say that with me. God is able. And I want you to unmute yourself. Let's hear your voice. God is able. God is able. And God is making. God is making. All grace. All grace. Abound to me. Abound to me. Abound to every member of my family. And are bound to every member on the, of this platform. He's making all grace abound unto us. By faith, we appropriate all the grace of God. As a result, at every point in time, all of us have all sufficiency in all things and we abound unto every good work. This is the body of Christ that was given up for us. Jesus Christ took poverty even though he was rich through his poverty we possess superabundant riches okay let us eat and declare that this is the blood of Jesus that was shed for the remission of our sins and by this blood, well, let's talk in unison. Some people, let's speak in unison, please. Let's speak in unison. By this blood, we are redeemed from the curse of poverty. Let's drink. God bless you.